Welcome back to Braintree Today. I'm Martha Constantinides and you're watching BCAM TV. Now we'll be getting into our latest stories from the week. At least five people will ki were killed and eight others injured after a shooting at the Old National Bank in downtown Louisville, Kentucky on Monday morning. Police received calls about a shooting at the bank around 8.30 a.m. When police arrived on the scene, police said they encountered active gunshots still being fired inside the location. The shooter was described as a current or former employee of the bank and wounded two responding officers. One is in critical condition. Deputy Chief of the Louisville Metro Police Department, Paul Humphrey, said that the suspected gunman was confirmed dead at the scene, but police are unclear if gunfire exchange with responding police led to his death or if it was self-inflicted. A group composed of doctors, disability advocates, and parents are banding together to keep a mask mandate in place for healthcare facilities ahead of the May expiration date. Just last month, Governor Maura Healey announced she would let the state's last remaining COVID-19 public health orders expire on May 11th, the same time the federal COVID emergency will end. The Massachusetts Coalition for Health Equity held a news conference Wednesday calling on the state to keep the mask requirement in healthcare settings. The group is also asking the state to keep PCR testing sites open. In response, a spokesperson for the Office of Health and Human Services said the new plan was done in consultation with infectious disease doctors and healthcare companies. RSV is a virus that causes serious respiratory infection in infants and in older adults as well. But a new RSV vaccine shows promise in preventing severe respiratory illness in those seniors and infants. A new study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that an investigational RSV vaccine given by single injection and developed by Pfizer was effective at protecting people over 60 from RSV-related lower respiratory illness, such as acute bronchitis and pneumonia. A separate study showed that when the vaccine was given to women in late pregnancy, their infants were less likely to develop significant RSV-related illness like bronchiolitis. In both studies, there were no apparent safety concerns. The way COVID-19 deaths are counted has been updated by state health officials. The previous definition in Massachusetts included anyone who had COVID listed as a cause of death on their death certificate and any individual who had a COVID diagnosis within 30 days, even if COVID wasn't listed on the death certificate. The new definition will rely almost exclusively on the individual's death certificate listing COVID-19 as the cause. This will align the Department of Public Health reporting with the most recent national standard definition. The Massachusetts DPH said in a statement, quote, while COVID can still cause severe disease and death overall, people are now less likely to die from COVID-related causes than they were earlier in the pandemic, end quote. On another note, while the state is not reporting daily COVID-19 health trends anymore, the Mass DPH is still monitoring and reporting health trends on a weekly basis. On April 6, newly released metrics show that over 63,000 molecular tests were conducted and 1,845 new positive cases were reported in the last week. As of April 4, 310 people are hospitalized in Massachusetts and 40 are in the ICU. 34 new deaths were also recorded in the last seven days. Thanks for watching Branchy Today. We'll be right back with more after the break. If you're 50 or older, it's important to stay up to date on COVID vaccines. Boosters greatly reduce your chance of severe illness, hospitalization, and death, and are an important defense. Even if you've already had COVID, schedule your appointment today at mass.gov slash COVID booster. Welcome back. The Braintree Town Council has approved over $1.5 million in supplemental spending for the current budget year to be used for school building repairs, fire department overtime, fuel and vehicle repairs, and other expenses. Much of the money for the spending package will come from transfers within the town budget, 
along with $434,000 worth of federal coronavirus pandemic aid. District 2 Town Councilor Joseph Reynolds, who chairs the Council's Ways and Means Committee, said he has concerns about dipping into the town's financial reserves as the town faces a number of financial challenges. During the meeting, Finance Director Edward Spellman said there will be another supplemental spending package before the end of the budget year on June 30th. The Braintree School Committee has reversed course on a plan to close the Manadequit School and move kindergarten and pre-K classes at the end of this year. At a March 20th meeting, the School Committee and Superintendent James Lee agreed to delay that move until the fall of 2024. The plan would have closed Manadequit and moved kindergarten and pre-K learning to South Middle School. The main reason is due to needed abatement work on the current South Middle School building which Lee said he didn't believe could be completed in time. Middle schoolers in Braintree won't be attending classes at the current South Middle School building next year. As they'll move into, a new school, into the new school at the start of the 2023-2024 semester. Last week, developer Zom Living filed revised plans with the town of Braintree, which includes the cutting of 100 apartments for the proposed residences on granite development at the South Shore Plaza. The number of apartments would be reduced from 315 to 230 in one building and from 180 to 165 in the second building, designated for residents age 55 and older. Another change is the amount of open space proposed on the 8.7 acre property. It would increase by an additional 1.6 acres, which includes land that housed a 99 restaurant. Jim Dunlop, managing director for Zom Living, said the developer listened to comments and concerns made by residents over the development's density. Dunlop said the builder was willing to reconsider the scale of the project. Still, many community members are not supportive of the proposed development as law signs, lawn signs against the development are, common a site, are a common sight around town. America Chorus has announced that the return date for Braintree's annual beautification day is April 29th. Residents will gather at Braintree Town Hall at 8 a.m. for location suggestions and to collect materials like rakes, bags, and work gloves. Kakora said in a statement that he looks forward to the event every year. Beautification Day is a great opportunity for our entire community, both residents and businesses, to come together to show our pride in our town's beauty and appeal. This year's target areas include the Town Hall, Memorial Mall, the grounds of the Braintree Historical Society, the Beach and Park at Sunset Lake, Peniman Park on Cleveland Ave, Smith Beach, and the Braintree High School Access Road. In the event of inclement weather, Beautification Day will be moved to May 6. Residents will, with questions can call the Mayor's Office at 781-794-8100 or the Recreation Office at 781-794-8901. The, the annual Rabies Clinic for the Town of Braintree is scheduled for Saturday, May 13th from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m at the outside side entrance of the Town Hall. The clinic is sponsored by the Town of Braintree, the Braintree JCs, and Dr. Joseph Cosman, DMV of the VCA. The vaccination fee is $15 per animal. Everyone, and everyone is asked to bring their animal's current rabies certificate. Spring sports are back in action at the high school. Here's Mike Wassel with a look at, this, at the most recent games. Braintree and Pembroke in boys lacrosse and an early strike from the Womps here in the first quarter. But the Titans are able to respond with two unanswered goals to take a 2-1 to one lead here in the first quarter. But Braintree bounces back to tie the score at two. And then late in the second quarter, able to go ahead on a pretty finish in front. And then the Womps at the side of the goal here on a wraparound chance. They're able to go ahead by a couple now leading by three Branch's largest lead is now four goals, seven to three, but the Titans battle back to get within three goals, but Braintree really never let them get any closer, and they win 10 to six here today over Pembroke. Moving on to girls lacrosse against Foxborough, and an early goal for the Womps. 
But that was the only time they led here today as Foxborough, just a very talented offensive team with three straight goals, now make it a fourth on some nice passing in front. They lead 4-1 to one here in the first half, now leading 6-1. to one. Braintree battling or trying to stay in this game, but they couldn't really keep up with the offense as Braintree gets a couple of goals here late in the second half, but Foxborough too much as they win this one by eight goals here today, 14-6 at Alumni Stadium. Softball, Braintree and Needham, and in the second inning, Braintree gets on the board with a single up the middle to make it a 1-0 game and then add a single run here on a misplay over at shortstop as Braintree extends their lead to 2-0, and then Needham in the fifth inning trying to get back in the game. They're able to score a run here on an RBI single, making it 2-1, and then Braintree with a wild pitch. This one over the catcher's head and ties the score at 2 and then Needham getting a big break here as this one finds its way through the infield, and then they take the lead after Braintree had a couple of mistakes in the inning, and then in the sixth, Braintree with the pass ball, they're able to tie the score at three as this one kept going back and forth, and then Braintree ahead with a floating single that finds its way into the outfield. Braintree on top, 4-3 to three here in the sixth inning, and then in the seventh with Needham down a run, they're able to tie the score on a blue pit that makes it a 4-4 game, and then Braintree facing a bases-loaded situation, a big strikeout that gets out of the jam as we head to the bottom of the seventh, tied at four, and Braintree with a little floater towards second base, and the ball is misplayed at first. It was dropped, and then Braintree bumps the ball here, and the throw over to third gets away, and Braintree with a walk-off win here in the seventh inning. A beautiful come-from-behind victory for the Womps, and a thrilling finish, a 5-4 to four victory over Needham, and what a game it was. Thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. We'll be right back with more stories in the area. Every home needs a basic emergency supply kit. It should meet the unique needs of the people who live there. Your kit doesn't have to cost a lot. You probably already have many of these supplies, and you can get others at a discount store. Visit mass.gov slash be prepared. Welcome back to Branchy Today. Now let's get right into more stories. According to police, a Braintree man faces drug trafficking charges as part of an ongoing investigation in Boston. On March 31st, officers assigned to the District C-11 Drug Control Unit in Dorchester, with the assistance of Braintree Police and the DEA Task Force, arrested Esteve Diaz of Braintree on drug-related charges. The officers were conducting an ongoing drug investigation and execution of search warrants in the area of 95 Skyline Drive. As a result of the search warrants, officers recovered 1,002 grams of cocaine, one pound of marijuana, and $1,480 in cash. Diaz was placed under arrest and charged with trafficking of a Class B substance and possession with intent to distribute a Class D substance. Police, Boston Police said he is expected to be arraigned in Dorchester District Court. An upcoming Massachusetts Department of Transportation project could see reconstruction efforts of curb ramps throughout Mass Dock District 6. The proposed project consists of the reconstruction of existing pedestrian curb ramps throughout District 6, which includes Boston, Braintree, Weymouth, Quincy, along with a few other towns. The proposal plans to, do, to accomplish standards with the Americans with Disabilities Act, known as ADA, and Architectural Access Board. In a news release, officials said, quote, the additional required work to reconstruct each curb ramp may include, but is not limited to, sidewalk and curb reconstruction, where it exists today, full depth pavement reconstruction and or milling and overlay of the existing roadway in the intersections, and restoration of existing grass areas, end quote. John Pigsley was arrested Wednesday after a grand jury indicted him on a raft of charges linked to a scheme to steal about $8 million from the MBTA. Pigsley, who worked as the Assistant Chief of Engineer of Facilities for commuter rail operator Keolis, was arrested alongside John Rafferty, who operated an electrical company that participated in the scheme. For more than a seven-year period, Pigsley instructed Rafferty to bill Keolis for vehicles, construction equipment, and construction supplies through his firm, LJ Electric, 
together the allegedly defrauded Keolis of more than $4 million using false LJ Electric invoices. Prosecutors also allege that Pigsley used his position at Keolis to purchase copper wire which he resold to scrap businesses to personally pocket more than $4.5 million. Pigsley appeared in federal court in Boston on Wednesday where he pleaded not guilty. Pigsley's next hearing is scheduled for May 22nd. The MBTA released the proposed Fiscal 2024 through 2028 MBTA Capital Investment Plan and is inviting the public to comment on its proposal for the next 30 days. The CIP is the five-year financial plan that funds all the MBTA's capital projects which are investments or activities related to acquiring, renewing, constructing, improving or maintaining a capital asset including project planning and design. The proposed CIP is now available on mbta.com slash CIP. The MBTA also plans to host a virtual public meeting on Wednesday, April 12th at 6.30 p.m. For more information about these meetings, you can visit mbta.com slash events. Legislation signed earlier this year set boundaries for how much space motorists must give cyclists and pedestrians on the road. The law took effect on Saturday, April 1st. The law essentially defines what a vulnerable road user is and ways to protect them as they travel alongside motorists. One of these protections is that drivers are required to leave at least four feet between their vehicle and vulnerable users, like pedestrians, as they pass. Vulnerable road users include pedestrians, those repairing utility facilities, emergency workers, cyclists, skateboarders, roller skaters, those in wheelchairs or motorized scooters, as well as those who ride horses, drive horse-drawn carriages, and those driving farm vehicles like tractors. Thanks for watching Braintree today. We'll be right back with more in entertainment. Want a year of no-cost birth control with just one trip to the pharmacy? Access, a Massachusetts law, can make it easier. Get more control over your birth control. Find out if you're covered. Learn more at mass.gov slash birth control. Welcome back to Brainchy Today. This week in entertainment, we have three movie recommendations. First up in entertainment, we have Jury Duty, which is a new TV series that chronicles the inner workings of an American court case through the eyes of one juror, juror Ronald Gladden. Ronald isn't aware of the fact that the entire court case is fake and that everyone in the courthouse is an actor besides him. The hidden camera comedy Jury Duty can be watched for free on Amazon Prime Video. Next up in entertainment, Murder Mystery 2 is a sequel to the 2019 film that focuses on Nick and Audrey Spitz. The sequel begins with the couple who are now private detectives being invited to their billionaire friend's private island. When their friend is abducted, Nick and Audrey find themselves at the center of international investigation. You can watch Murder Mystery 2 now only on Netflix. Finally in entertainment, Daisy Jones and the Six is a drama miniseries based on Taylor Jenkins Reid, best-selling novel of the same name. The limited series details the rise and fall of a fictional 70s band and its front woman Daisy Jones. The novel the novel the series is based on it on is loosely inspired by Fleetwood Mac. The show stars Riley Cuff and Sam Claflin and can be streamed now on Amazon Prime Video. That'll do it for news today. I'm Martha Constantinidis and thank you for watching Braintree Today on BCAM TV. Stay safe and we'll see you next time.